You go here on this page, you can uh, see the PPT setting up. Right? Download. So then please close any other window on the internet during the class. We're maybe using the computer room, but it's not for browsing on the neighbor news, right? <laughs> during the class. So, as a part of setting up, we said your no deal option or your BATNA is one thing you need to think about before you start the negotiation. Okay, this is before the negotiation. What does BATNA stand for? What's B? Best. A. T. Uh -huh. Two. N. Right, so another way to say that is the no deal option. So, on the internet course, they call it the BATNA. In the book, they say no deal option. We're talking about the same thing. Okay? So, we discussed that the five things tomorrow, yes, are the last class. So, the last class we discussed number one using your BATS BATNA and the other partners to find the ZOPA. So today we're going to discuss the other ones, and we're also going to discuss, discuss making decision trees. So the last class we finished by talking about the ZOPA. We gave an example of buying a car, simple negotiation. Okay. So what was the ZOPA in the last class? Can you remember? Join the ZOPA. Yes, what we Zone of possible agreement, but what was it in this story? Can you remember what the ZOPA was? Uh, you have to make two lines, right? Two lines. One line is the buyer, and the other line is the seller. So, what information do we need to know to figure out? The the zone of potential agreement. We need to know just two things. What two things do we need to know? Just the least price, the lowest price for the seller and the highest price for the buyer, right? That's called our, our uh, reservation price, right? So when we know our BATNA, we can figure out our reservation price. Okay, so in this case, what was the reservation price <coughs> for the seller? The lowest price the seller would sell for? To John? 4500 right? What about the buyer? What, what's the highest price the buyer is going to buy for? We don't know, right? <coughs> but let's just think. What do you think, if you're a buyer, what would be the highest price? The reasonable price is 5,000. I think 4,500. Also 4,500? Yes. Or let's say 5,000, right? So reasonable price on the internet is 5,000, right? So where is the zone of potential agreement? Between them. Between these here, right? So this is called the ZOPA. This is the highest price the buyer will pay. This is the lowest price the seller will accept. So, can we make a deal? Yes, right? What's the price going to be? Depends on the negotiation. Okay. So, who negotiates better is going to get closer to their price. So, we also talked about using the stretch goal. So, perhaps whoever uses stretch goal better might get a better price in this case. Okay, I'm very honest, so I buyer, I start at 5,000, right? Yes. But the seller starts at 6,000, that's their sixth stretch goal. This is the most I'm going to pay as a buyer, 5,000. In the end, the seller comes back to 5,000. Looks like I made a good deal. But just I started with a very bad stretch goal. I didn't have any stretch goal. So in the end, I paid 5,000 and the seller gets a better deal. So, 
we said here that so the two numbers, the sum of potential agreement here, is really is between the reservation price. Oh, sorry. Here is the information for the here's the information for the buyer. John's reservation price is five thousand five hundred. Reasonable price four thousand. Stretch goal. So we, in this case, John's reservation price is five thousand five hundred, right? So this is the result. If we use these numbers for the buyer, okay, he. He has a stretch goal of 3,500. So, buyer is 3,500, is their stretch goal. Uh, reasonable price, they think, is this 4,500. For the seller, they have their stretch goal was 6,000. Their reasonable price was 5,000. So, this is the ZOPA, right? We can write all the numbers down. But the negotiation is going to start here. The buyer is going to say, I give 3,500. The seller is going to say, I want 6,000. Okay? And then they have to negotiate. But because we have this area here, they should be able to make an agreement in that area. So, what if John needs the car immediately? How can you respond? So, what do you think? What can you do? So you said in this case that uh, you want to keep the car for three more weeks, but John needs the car immediately. Right? So what can you do next? Negotiation is finished. What are you going to do? I buy the car. I sell the car today. Sell the car to just finish with John and sell to Mary? Yes. Does anybody have any other option? John wants the car now and you want to keep the car for three weeks. So I negotiate, I want car use three weeks. Mm -hmm. So I price down to three weeks pay. You reduce the price? Yes. You can get the car for three weeks, right? But John says no, I need the car now. I I speak price up and I use this price of pay use text sheet pay. Okay, that's the one creative solution, right? So you have to look for a creative solution. That's the answer, right? You said you're going to pay for the taxi for him every day <laughs> to go to work. Okay? So the the point is you ask why. You ask the John, why do you need the car? Now Right? So John might say, I need to go to work every day. I need the car for going to work. So you could say, well, I can pay for the taxi. Or uh, I can, if you live near, you could say, I can pick you up. <laughs> I can take you to work in the morning and take you back in the evening. Okay. So that's a creative way to solve the problem, by focusing on people's interests. Why do I need the car? Why do you need the car? So maybe you can meet those interests. So for example, give John a ride to work every day. Okay, maybe you both live in the same area and he wants to go into the city. So let's talk about decision tree. A decision tree is a very useful tool in doing the Batman analysis and making all sorts of business decisions. So you can use decision tree for making any decision. But it's especially helpful when we have numbers or figures. Okay, decision tree is you have, looks like this, right? You have option A or option B. Which one should I take? Option A may have some more branches, and B may have some more branches, right? And then even more branches. So you have to decide which is the best decision. So. When we're, what we're doing is we're comparing our bat map against what we've been offered in the negotiation. Okay? So we want to have some way to see which is better, our bat map or the thing we're being offered. So your company has sued a supplier for $4.6 million. Do you understand sued? Yes. What does sued mean? How do you say it in Korean? There's a 50-50 chance your company will win. 
Future legal expenses will be $400,000. In the US, you don't get back the legal expenses if you win. I think it's a different legal system. So whether you win or not, you're not going to get this money back. Okay. Uh, during the negotiations, the defendant, do you understand the defendant? What does that mean? Say. We have plaintiff and defendant in the case, right? The plaintiff is asking for justice. So ask, do you understand justice? And the defendant is defending themselves. Do you understand to defend? Yes. That's a legal term in the court. So plaintiff is your company. You're suing the supplier. You want them to pay you. They didn't pay you the money and you want justice. Defendant is the other company. They're saying, there's a reason I didn't pay you. Okay? So, anyway, the defendant offered to settle the case, settle means agree, for two million. Should your company accept their offer or not? What do you think, just looking at that? Accept the offer or don't accept the offer? Accept the offer. Why? Because we surely lose that knowledge. So yeah. I think I choose a better safety place. Okay, yes. So we can do, we, you're correct, but we can do the calculation, right? So we have a choice. We can litigate, which means we can go to court and fight in the court. Or we can settle, we can agree before we go to court. Okay. If we settle, we're sure we're going to get how much? Two million dollars from the supplier. Okay. If we go to court, we have a 50-50 chance. 50% chance of getting 4.6 million. Right? But we have still have to pay our legal cost of 400,000. So that's going to be 4.2 million. If we lose, we have to pay our legal costs, minus 0.4. Okay, so what I do here is I do the calculation. This one is 2, and then I get 50% of 4.2. So we've got 4.2 multiplied by 0 0.5, okay? And minus 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.5 equals. So can you tell me what number do I get? What total do I get? This is 2.1 and this is? Minus. Minus 0.2. What's the total? 1.9. So this side, litigate is 1.9. Settle is 2 million. Okay? Do you understand? I have a question. Yes? This, this calculation includes the low, lawyer's commission. Yes, lawyer's commission is this one. If I lose the court case, I have to pay this money to the lawyers. It's expensive, right? So, just to go back again, this is important. 50-50 chance, you have to decide. What is the chances of winning the court case? 60-40, 70 30 80-20? 80-20. Right, 50-50. In this case, 50-50. So it means that when we say we write down our options, we know that this has a 50% chance of happening. This has a 50% chance of happening. Okay? So I'll get half of this and half of this and add together. So we can get this side. Okay? And then that's chances. If we litigate, the probability is that we're going to get 1.9 million. Okay? 50% chance we'll get 4.2 million. 50% chance we lose 0.4 million. So overall, 1.9 million. We settle the case now, we get two million. So you said to settle the case, okay? So that's a decision tree. So it just makes, if we look at it like this, it's a little bit confusing, right? But if we make a tree like this, write the things out like this, it's easier to compare the things. So then, let's look at a little bit more complicated one. Did you reply 
Yes, 50% mm -hmm. is 0 0.5, okay? So, 50% is equal to 0 0.5, if we write that, okay? So now you have to read this, and then you have to write your own decision tree. Make your own decision tree, okay? I showed you the example. So you, you start with, you have two companies, company A and company B. Company A has a 21 million value, Company B has a 15 million value. The price is the same for both companies. You're looking to acquire. What, what's another word for acquire in English? What's another word for acquire in English? Simple word. Get or buy, right? You're going to buy Company A or Company B. The price is the same, but Company A has a value of 21 million. Company B has a value of 15 million. So if you don't read this, which one are you going to buy? First one. Why? Why? Because the value is higher, right? But we have this other information. If you acquire company A, there's a 90% chance the government will challenge the acquisition. So sometimes the government doesn't allow one company to buy another company because it's anti-competition. Company gets too big. Okay, so, and there's a 60% chance the government will win. If the government wins, the value of A will drop to 14 million because of legal fees plus sell-off costs. Even if the government loses, the value drops to 19 million because of legal fees. Okay, if you acquire company B, there's not going to be any government challenge. So just try to write out, write out a decision tree on the paper. Do you have some paper? So just make this, right? You're going to start with A and B, right? Then B is very simple, right? No, just no government challenge. But A, you have the government challenge or no government challenge. And then you have, if the government challenge, win or lose. So just write out uh, the decision tree. Try not to look at the answer in the next slide. Okay, so you have it. the next one is government challenge. You can just write GC. Do you understand government challenge? That's a 90% chance. And then we have 10% is going to be no challenge. Okay? If the government challenge, what are the next two options? Government wins or I win. Okay? What's the prob chance or the probability? Multiply these numbers by 
So you're following this line you should make clear, right? Nine percent challenge. And then you got mean or lose. Okay? So this number you got fifteen million. Right? You have to multiply that by ninety percent. Ah, that's for B, okay. So you have to draw it, you haven't done the, the line properly, it should be A, B, right? Then A, what have we got here? Yes, yeah, 90, why does it say 60? In 90 and 10. So don't look at the answer yet, right? You have to try it yourself. But you need to, I want you to draw out the decision tree. Not just make a calculation. Because you can make a mistake if you just try to do the calculation. So draw out the decision tree first. Right? Then write in the percentage. Win point six, lose point four, government challenge point nine, no government challenge point one. But you should have written the tree, right? This here, 14 million, multiplied by 60%. Is that right? And then 19 million multiplied by 40%. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, This number looks too high because 40% of 19 should be lower than 10. Um, and this one looks okay, that's 60%. I can see about 60% here. Then the average, and then you need to multiply this by 90%. The average you multiply by 90%. Yes? Chance that 
government will challenge. But what we want to find out, if the government challenge, what's the value? So there is a 0.6% chance the government will win. There's a 0.4% chance the government will lose. Okay? We will get 14 million if we win, and 19 million if we lose. So we multiply these two together, and the average number is 16. Okay? So we put 16 back here, and multiply by the 90%. 16 is here the last option of if, to go, if we buy A, and the government challenges, and we have a court case, in this case we win, and in this case we lose. Or sorry, in this case we lose, in this case we win, right? So, if we have points, what's 0.6 multiplied by 14? Equals? Eight point four. We'll get that much money if we lose the case. Okay? The chances are. And then plus this one, point four by point seven point six. So the total is sixteen. So it's just like we did back in the last one. The uh, this one showed us that uh, in the example, the average of four point two. 0.4, we found the average, okay? The average was 1.9 when we multiplied them together. So here we find the average for win and lose. Find the average, okay? The average is 16. The average result for these two is 16. And then there's a 90% chance that this will happen. So we have to multiply 0.9 by 16, okay? And then if we do that and this and add them together, we're going to get 16.5 here for company A. So which company should we invest in? A or B? A. A. Okay, so in this case, it was harder to say at the start. We needed to do some calculations. We needed to make the decision tree and then put in the numbers and make the calculations. And the system is kind of expectation? Yes. Average expectation. Okay, average expectation. So this is what we're doing. Average expectation. Do you have any question about decision trees before we move on? Do you think you can use decision trees for making a decision? Especially useful for when we are looking at the court case. Our next best option is a court case. Do you understand court case? Yes. Litigation, court case. Where do you say court case in Korean? So, so, something like that. So, so. If our next best option is the so, so, this is useful. What's our percent of chance of winning? Okay. What's our percent chance of losing? Or if we acquire, what could happen? What's the percent chance of this or that? So. Then let's move on to number two here in our discussion about BATNA before the agreement. It is make the other side see you as able to walk away. So make sure, do you understand make sure? So like, make the other side think that you can walk away from the agreement. So. <coughs> Oh, sorry, just first, we should finish about the other side's no deal option. And we're talking about the ZOPA. So by understanding the other side's no deal option, the ZOPA can be extended or made bigger. So, let's look at this example. A Japanese company wanted to buy two-thirds of a U.S. company. So, I, we're the U.S. company. Okay, the Japanese company wants to buy us. Japanese company spent two years negotiating. They spent a lot of time and effort negotiating to buy our company. So we looked at their BATNA. So we always have to look at the other side's BATNA. And we said, the Japanese company doesn't really have a choice. There is no other companies they can buy, like our company. Okay? So they have no good external option. Do you understand external, outside the company? 
So we say they don't really have a bad map, just they, they're not going to be able to buy another company. Okay, and then there was also negative internal options, which means that they spent two years already negotiating. So if they, if they don't take the deal, then the managers might feel like they wasted a lot of time or might even get into trouble inside the company for spending all the time and resources and not getting any result. So also this Japanese company had a lot of cash. We knew they had a lot of cash. So the US companies pushed for and got a higher price than they expected because they understood that the other side didn't have a good no-deal option. Okay? So if they didn't understand that the other side didn't have a good no-deal option, then they couldn't extend the ZOPA. Okay? When we were looking at the car, we said the ZOPA was between the buyer and the seller. Buyer, seller, seller 4,500. Buyer 5,500. So this is also buyer and seller. Okay, Japanese company is buyer, and the uh, American company is seller. So the American company is looking at the Japanese company, and they say they have no option, no other option. So for example, you are buying some LPG car, and you live in the countryside. So nobody else in the countryside owns the LPG car. You need to go to Seoul. It's too far away. Okay? And I know you have a lot of cash. Okay? And I know that some internal problem, your wife really wants, uh, or your husband really wants an LPG car. So if you don't get the LPG car, you're going to get complained a lot by your wife or your husband. Okay? So to put it a similar way, right? So then I know that those things about you, you don't really have any other options. Okay? So you're going to have to accept this price, or even higher you might pay even higher than your reservation price because you don't have any no-deal option here. Okay, can you understand that idea? Yes. So if we can understand the other side's no-deal option, we can make the ZOPA bigger. Instead of here to here, here to 6,000. Okay? We can say that they're going, they don't have a no-deal option, so we can make the ZOPA bigger. <coughs> so then, Make sure that people believe you can walk away from the negotiation. So, on some, on some occasions, this can be a bad option, right? Say you're working for your boss, and you tell your boss, oh, I don't need this job anyway, right? I can just walk away. Let's say you're negotiating about your next contract, okay? And you say, oh, I, can, I got another job offer from another company. So I can walk away. Do you understand walk away? Easily walk away. But maybe your employer, employer likes loyal employees. Do you understand loyal? Yes. Employees who want to work for the company. Especially in Asia, they like loyalty in employees, right? So in that case, uh, telling your boss that you can walk away or telling the other person that you can walk away might not be a good idea, right? You tell your boss, oh, I can just walk away. Okay, I have another option somewhere else. <laughs> then they might say, okay, then bye. <laughs> I don't want to anyway. If you're not interested in working in this company, just go. Right? So in that case, it could be a bad idea. Because in this case, it could be viewed as a threat. Okay, other cases is when there's some union. Do you understand union? Yes. And people say to the union, like, uh, the union or the union says to the company, we're going to close down the factory, Why? Right? Then the factory is just going to reply to the union, okay, I'm not going to pay your salary, or I'm going to fire everybody. So you can make some escalation. Do you understand escalation? Escalation means, do you know escalator? Uh, yes. In the supermarket, you go, do you like the going up and down the escalator? Yes. Yes? Uh, there is a joke in English about an escalator, maybe you don't understand. My mother is very scabby. She buys everything marked down in the shop. Do you understand marked down in the shop? Marked down means reduced price. So one day she came home with the escalator. Because the escalator also has a sign down, right? It's not very funny. 
So anyway, we can understand what an escalator is. But usually we talk about escalation is going up. Okay? So the problem escalates means you get angry, I get more angrier. You get angrier, I get angrier. Okay? We end up doing bad things, more bad things to each other. Is escalation a good thing in a negotiation? No. No, right? So if we threaten people, we can end up with, with escalation. So that's what I tell my wife. I tell her, don't, why, threatening is not a good way, right? Because if you threaten me, then I could do something else against you, and then you do something else against me, and I do something else against you, then things can go badly, right? So let's just try to solve the problem by just talking nicely to each other, right? So <coughs> threatening is not a good way. So if it's going to be viewed as a threat that you can walk away, right? It might not be a good option. But in, mo in most circumstances, if we get a good outside option and we show that we can walk away, it can help us to get better results in the negotiations. In most cases, the better our BATNA is, the stronger our BATNA is, the stronger our no deal option is, the better result we can get in the negotiation. And we make the other person believe that we can walk away. So here are some quotes. If you can, if you can walk away, uh, he who cares least wins. Do you understand this? He who cares least wins. So this should say can't on the first slide. If you can't walk away, you can't negotiate, right? Uh, just a typo. So if you can't say, if you don't have any other option and you can't go away, then he says there's no negotiation. Just the other person wins, gets everything they want, okay? Because you, you have no other option. So we saw that with the Japanese and American company. The Japanese company didn't have any other option. They couldn't walk away, so they couldn't do a good negotiation, okay? And another phrase, he who cares less wins. So the person who cares less is going to be the one who says, well, I don't care, I can, I can walk away. So in the end, you give in, and you let them have what they want. Okay? But the other side's observation of your calm readiness to walk away can be an advantage. So important word here is calm. You're not threatening them or excited, right? Just they understand that you're calm, and you're, you have an option, and you can go away then this can give you an advantage in the negotiation. Can you, maybe when you're negotiating with your mother, can you go away? Leave the house? No. So your mother has more power in the negotiation, right? Yes. Okay, you can't walk away, you can't negotiate, right? It's hard to negotiate, you can't walk away. Can you say, I'll find another parent who will give me money and pay for my things? <laughs> No? Don't have another option like that? Then that's why it's not easy in that negotiation, right? <coughs> so, here's another quote. These are quotes from CEOs, right? This is from CEO of AOL, American company. You would never do a deal without talking to anyone else. Never. Okay? So it means that you would never do a deal, I would never do a deal with you without talking to him and him and other companies. Okay, you want to sell me your company, and we're doing a negotiation. I would never just, just do that with you. I would also check with him, call him, and call him, and call her, and ask them, How, would you sell your company? How much would you sell your company for? Okay? So, <coughs> they say, whenever we feel there's a possibility of a deal with someone, we immediately call six other people. Okay, there's another phrase in English, don't buy something in the first shop you walk into. Okay, you have to check the other shops first. So, uh, doing this is adding other parties, other interested parties. This can be much more effective than having a better negotiating skill. So doing this is actually better than having a better negotiation skill. Adding other parties who are interested. It helps to change the perception of the other side and your own self-perception. So the other side knows that there are other parties who are interested. Okay? Are they going to be quicker or, or slower to make a negotiation? 
if they know that somebody else is interested too, are they going to be quicker or slower to make the negotiations? Slower. Let's say you're buying a house and the real estate agent tells you, uh, well, the house costs $200,000, right? And you're trying to negotiate with the real estate agent about the price. But just then somebody calls the real estate agent and they say, I want to buy the house for, for $195,000, right? Are you going to be quicker to negotiate or slower to negotiate with the real estate agent? Quicker. Quicker, right? Are you going to be in a weaker position or stronger position? Because. Weaker position, right? So real estate agents often do that. Do you think they're always telling the truth, the real estate agent? No. Do you think if somebody calls them, it's their friend or really another person? Friend. <laughs> they can do that sometimes, right? They get their friend to call them. And their friend says, oh, I'm very interested in the buying the apartment for this price. Does that help the real estate agent in their negotiation? Yes. With the buyer? Yes. So you have to be careful about that, right? Are they being, is there really another person or not? But anyway, if you add more people into the negotiation, then you have more power and you have a better uh, chance to get better results in the negotiation. So very common in real estate, they play the people off each other, right? They tell you, you both want to buy the same house, right? They tell you, well, she offered 195, then you offer 200, then I call you and I say, he offered 200. A little bit like an auction. Do you understand an auction? Yes. Okay, and then you say, okay, 205, and then I, I call you, right? So having the other interested party is a big bonus in making people believe you can walk away from them. Because you think, oh, then the, the Brudon Sam wants to sell the house. They're not going to walk away. But if there's another person, then you believe, yes, they can walk away. They have another interested person. So it also helps your own self-perception. If you're the seller, you can feel more confident. Okay, you have more buyers. If I, I'm only negotiating with you, you're the only buyer, I don't feel so confident. But if I know I have other interested parties, I feel more confident in the negotiation. And that shows in the negotiation. Okay, if I feel more confident, I can also negotiate well and get a better deal. So let's look at an example. So what we want to do is improve our no deal options, right? We want to find more interested parties. So in week one, we talked about an American guy who was selling his company. And the angel investors, they all had some fixed price, like collusion. So he went and found another interested parties, right? Like the guy across the street, okay? Or investment bank. So he was successful in the end using that strategy. So then, uh, what are you going to do in this case? So, company A is the biggest company. Company B is the next biggest. Company C, the next biggest. And D, the smallest. So we can write on the board. A, B, C. With the bigger and smaller, right? A is the biggest. Then there's B. C. D. C. And then there's D. Right? There's a smaller D. <laughs> so... You are company B, okay? What are you going to try and do, okay, as a strategy? So in this business, you want to be the biggest company. So who are you going to try to buy? Which company are you going to try to buy? A is bigger than you. They're your competitor. You can try to buy them. C, why? Because B, company B products C. C is smaller than B. Yes. And they com combine the big co company and C is the biggest company in it. Yes, yeah, so company B should approach company C and try to buy them, right? If they do that, they also have another option. Company C knows if company B doesn't make a deal with them, company B can buy the company D. So the worst case for company B is they don't do anything, then company A buys company C. Then company B has to negotiate to buy company D. 
Do they have a strong position when they're negotiating? No. Do they have any other options? Yes. What's their other option? Company A brought company C. There's only four companies in the industry. They buy the A, A stock price. They buy A and C? You don't have enough money. So you have no option. You're negotiating with company D and you have no, op no deal option. So you're going to end up paying a bad price for company D. Or a too high price for company D. So that's kind of like strategy, right? So quickly, company B is going to try and buy company C quickly, right? Then they leave A with just a bad deal with D. So company B should act first and approach the company C for negotiations. If it doesn't work with company C, we can always buy company D. If, if A, A, A murder D, mm -hmm. they say the same space in B plus C. Maybe, but it's better for B to buy C than D, right? Because A and C is going to be bigger. Here's another example of improving your no-deal options. So, do you know the Holocaust? When the German uh, Nazis uh -huh. killed the Jewish people? Yes. Millions of them? Yes. So there were some survivors of the Jewish people who went to Israel and the US and so on, right? And they were negotiating with the Swiss banks to get some money back that was deposited in Switzerland during the war. And this guy, Eric Bromfen, was negotiating on behalf of the survivors. So he went to the banks, and the banks, they said, look, we, sold, we paid back all the money years ago. Legally, there's nothing you can do, right? We made a legal agreement, and we paid back all the years. So it looked like Bromfen had a very weak position, because the banks had the legal position, stronger legal position. Okay? Legally, they had paid back the money they had to pay back. But clearly the Jewish people felt the Swiss bank should pay them more money. Okay? So he went and made a coalition of interest away from the table, which threatened the interests of the banks. For example, he found some Jewish people in the US who owned the investment funds. Okay? And they said that they wouldn't invest in the Swiss banks anymore. They wouldn't buy the stock of the Swiss banks. Okay? He found some other uh, big government officials who were Jewish in the US and they said they wouldn't use the Swiss bank for selling the government bonds or selling the state bonds. So he made this coalition of interest of people who told the Swiss bank that they weren't going to use them for business anymore unless they negotiated properly. So the Swiss bank gave in and they paid out 1.25 billion dollars to the survivors. Okay? First of all they had a very weak no deal option. Then they improved their no deal option. Okay? There were a lot of wealthy and important Jewish survivors in New York, in the US, who were making big decisions about whether to give the contract to the Swiss bank or not, okay? or buy the stock in the Swiss bank. So the Swiss bank was quite afraid of this coalition of interest, and they decided to negotiate in a better way, and then paid out the money. So in this case, we are making them believe you can walk away, right? But in this, if, we walk, if we walk away, we have another option, okay? We can do this. Do you have any question about what we studied so far today? We're still on doing things you can do away from the table. Yes? Do you have a question? No? I study more and because it's if you have any other questions, you can email me or put on the Geisha plan or ask after class, you can come to my office. So the reading for this part is chapter 6 in the book. Chapter 6 in the book is about the, this part you're studying now. No deal option. There's also a video about decision tree. So let's finish there for today.